Hey everyone, today I'll show you how to make an X Shake in Premiere Pro. Five paid presets are available in the description. NV2, Chris, Mark, and Stazza edit Stain and Chappie, thank you for the memberships. So these are the kind of shakes that we're going to make. To start off, we've got this one, which is a regular X Shake that looks like this. Then we've got a longer one, which is pretty similar to the first, but obviously it lasts a bit longer. So yeah, it looks like this. And then we've got one that has been paired with Tilt, so it's got a little bit of a Tilt Shake to it. That looks like this. And the final one, which has been paired with a Z Shake. So let's begin with the first. The very first step is to make the basic template that we will copy and paste over to our other clips. Keyframe the amplitude to 1 at the beginning, head to the end and then set it to 0. Then open up the graph and then pull this handle all the way to the left. So it's going to usually look like this and then just pull it all the way making sure it's on level just there and let go. Now all you need to do is copy down my settings. So first of all check the motion blur box. Now I recommend saving this as a preset so you can right click on the effect and click on save presets then you can name it and then click ok. Now all you need to do next is copy down my settings that is pretty much all you're going to be doing. So frequency set that to 4. Turn on motion blur and set the motion blur length to 5 and also hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Not at the beginning but one frame ahead so head one frame from the start then set the length to 5, 1 frame ahead, set it to 0 0.5, 1 more frame ahead and then 0. Open up your X shake and copy these down so 0, 1, 125, 1 and then for the X phase set it to whatever you think is most suitable. The reason why I've set it to negative 2.6 is because I wanted it to look off centered so if I just set it to something like let's go with 0 which is the default setting you can see there's not really any motion blur and by decreasing or increasing the X phase you can change its positioning like that. So for me, negative 2.6 is fine. Open up the Y shake and set the first one to zero. You can leave this one, it won't make a difference as long as this is set to zero. So if it says amp and it's been set to zero, the frequency will not be affected. So both of these have been set to zero, meaning the frequencies can be set at any value, it won't make a difference. So now your shake is ready. However, you probably noticed that there is a flashing effect at the beginning, and that's because I've added Lumetri color. So to do this, head over to Lumetri color on your right side, increase the exposure to three, and then head over to your effect controls and scroll down underneath basic correction you're going to see the same setting so exposure here set that to three at the beginning at about five or six frames ahead and then set it to zero then just graph it same thing as always open it up pulling it all the way to the left in fact i'll show you how to do it so linear that's the original pull it all the way like that let go now for my second shake which is a bit longer i've got different settings so i've got the same amplitude settings as before so what you can do is actually head over to your effects panel and then just apply the preset that you saved previously however but there are a few changes we're going to make so set the frequency to two once again motion blur should be on and keyframe the blur length one frame ahead so not at the start but one frame ahead like that and set it to five at about one two frames ahead and then set it to one if your sequence is in 30 or 60 frames per second then you might have to head one or two frames ahead so one two and then just move it there. It may or may not turn out looking better, but it depends on your sequence. But yeah, make sure it's set to one. Now, moving on to the X shake, it should go zero, one, 500, and 1 1.5. And then set the rest to zero, like the Y shake, so zero, zero, and leave everything else because I think it's already been set to zero for the Z and tilt shake. So it should turn out looking like a very smooth, bouncy shake like that. And don't forget to copy and paste your exposure effect onto your second clip. Simply right click, copy, and then right click here, paste for the second clip. Next, we've got a shake that has been paired with a bit of tilt. Once again, apply your saved preset. Now we're going to graph this a little different. Instead of completely tightening this graph, what we're going to do is right click on the second keyframe and click on ease in. Then you want to pull it very, very slightly to the left so it looks like a very smooth curve. It does not have to look perfect, but this is mine. I'd say that this handle should touch the playhead about five frames back. So if I just said five frames back, yeah, so somewhere like here. Again, as I said, it does not have to be perfect. This is completely fine. But once again, frequency to motion blur on. Leave it at 0 0.5, but do not keyframe it. X shake, 0, 1, 150, 1 1.5. Y shake should be 0, 0 for both the amps. Same goes for the Z shakes, even though they should already be set at 0. Unlike the tilt, which we need to change, so it should go 0, 1, Four, and then one and then once again just apply your lumetri color that you made so it should turn out looking like this and for the final one we've got it paired with z shake it's got a very similar amplitude graph to the one that we just made so you could just right click ease in on the second keyframe and slightly put it to the left about five frames back like that frequency two motion blur on motion blur length 0 0.5 x shake 0 1 150 1 1.5 for the y shake remember to set it all to zero now open up the z shake not the y one and set it to 0, 1, 75, 2. You can also add on a little bit of tilt, so it should go 0, 1, 
0.5 and 0.5. This is the result. However, if the shake does not look fluid, what you can do is change the Z phase. So for example, I've set it to, I think 2.1. You can see that the framing has changed. It's more zoomed out, unlike before where it was zoomed in. You can also increase the wave amp. So for example, 125. In fact, let's go 225 for the extra bouncy effect. So now it looks more like a Z shake rather than a X shake. Now you're probably wondering why is there an extra clip at the end? This one is a very delicate shake. It kind of works like a twitch, but that's if you increase the frequency. So for example, if I set it to, let's go six, which looks like this, it's a very quick twitch effect. This final preset alongside with all of these presets are available to purchase for only 149 and you get 20% off until the end of February. Just apply the code X shake. Anyways, thank you for watching. Peace.